Yo, welcome back, guys. Episode two of Inked NBA. Today we got Nasir Little on the pod. Uh, I appreciate the support we got on the first episode. Hope you guys enjoy this one just as much. What's up, guys? This is your host, Matt Mangano. Make sure to follow, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. And we also have a YouTube channel, so head over to YouTube and hit that subscribe button. What's going on, bro? How you doing today? Doing good, man. Doing great. Just chilling. Uh, getting ready for the season coming up and uh, just been working. Hell yeah. You see, I got a little special shirt I threw on today. <laughs> I see anyone, it. Anyone on YouTube, go peep. I um, see it. <laughs> yes. So when you, let's start. So we talk everything tattoos. Um, so I just want to start with, when did you when did you start getting tatted? Uh, at what age did you go and get your first tat? And, and what tattoo was that? Um, I got my first tattoo when I was 17. Uh, it was crazy. It actually was my mom's idea. Uh, me and my sisters, we all got like a matching uh, like symbol for, uh, you know, to represent the three of us. And I got that on my chest. And what is that? What is it like a family crest? Right. I've seen it. It's like a. Uh, it's a shield and then um you know it's kind of representative of our name build and then the moon inside the shield uh basically you know symbolizing like under protector stuff like that okay cool so does your mom have tattoos because you said your mom was the one that like had the idea to go in uh and, and have you guys do that no she actually doesn't uh my parents don't really have tattoos. My dad has one on his shoulder, but yeah, my parents uh, don't have any tattoos for real. But they were they were cool with it because I know a lot of a lot of parents, you know, are always like kind of like wishy washy when it comes to like their kids going out and getting <laughs> tattooed. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were cool with it. Uh, they were tripping. Um, their thing was they didn't want me to just come back and just have like two full sleeves out of mm-hmm. nowhere, but. Uh, you know, I was really uh, transparent you know, with my parents. Uh, I only got two tats while I was in high school, so it wasn't anything crazy, but um, yeah. So, and those those first two tats, were those like legit, like you went to a shop and got them done, or that was like like your boy was doing it for you, like in a garage or something? No, I actually went to a shop, uh, okay. you know, because the, uh, the first two tats was done by the same guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, the first time me and my sisters, we all went, got it done and then for my second tat i went back to him and then got a tattoo on my left arm okay and so have you ever had like a crazy spot where you got tatted meaning like out of a shop out of a shop uh i mean recently last year i actually got i was getting tatted in my house but i don't think that that was anything like weird or crazy um for the most part, yeah. My, I mean, I've been in pretty comfortable situations. Uh, you know, nothing crazy like at a, in a truck or like a random spot. But um, yeah, yeah. last year, I got tattooed in my house, which was really dope. It was, it was super cool. To, uh, yeah, no, that's super that. dope. So I seen you're obviously like you're one of the the younger guys in the league um, at 21, and you have already you know both arm sleeves are like practically done, right? And then your whole chest. Yeah, I actually just got this finished. Uh, couple of weeks ago so i just got some new ink so i'm really fully sleeved up now now you're yeah, now you're sleeved up so but yeah. being so young 21 um you know i'm only 22 and for me like i always say this when when people ask about like my what really sparked my interest you know a lot of the the like veteran guys we talk to um it's always ai it's always you know dennis rodman guys like that for you being a guy that's 21 like what was what was who were you watching growing up or like what what artists were you listening to that you really were like, yo, like they kind of have some dope ink. Uh, I want to go out and get some. And for me, it was dope sleeves. Um, and I just like the look of it. Um, I feel like it just, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that his style inspired me, but uh, Birdman, I think it was one of the most like, um, you know, most influential guys when it comes to tattoos. You know, he had crazy sleeves all the way up the neck. Like, yeah. Um, I just always like the look of them, especially like with the sport that we play with, you know, we play, we wear jerseys, you know, tank top jerseys. So like it kind of allows you to have some type of personality and not, I wouldn't say personality, mm-hmm. but it allows you to have creativity without having to wear, like, obviously we can't wear earrings and chains and all that while we play. So it kind of allows you to add a little bit of flavor to yourself, you know, within the game. Yeah. No, a little bit of like swag. Let's like VC. Once you get yeah, the, the VC, swag, yeah. you got it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Your little song. Um, that's it. So that's actually dope that you bring that up because I've, I've never like asked anyone this and I'm kind of curious. So when you go out and let's say you get a new piece, you're getting yeah. ready for the game. Let's say you normally wear a left arm sleeve. You just got a new piece in your left arm. Are you are you holding off? You're trying to show off the ink mid game or what's the what's the plan behind that? See, that's that's the battle. Uh, my rookie year, I was wearing a sleeve on my right arm. I didn't have any tattoos on it. But now it's kind of like now that it's all inked up, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I want to show Trying it to off. Trying to show it off a little bit, yeah. But yeah, I think I'm going to lean towards showing off the tats for sure. Uh, some guys, you know, wear sleeves for like medical reasons or just comfort reasons. So I know teammates mm-hmm. that have sleeves who still, tattoo sleeves, who still wear like shooting sleeves. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. Talking about uh, team, so teammate uh, Anthony Simmons, Simons just yeah. got hit up like crazy he went nuts this summer um so when you're like again i'm saying you're the younger guy in the league you see like your boys getting t- even kobe white kobe white just went and got um yeah a yeah, back piece former went. teammate yeah. so is that like a thing like you guys talk about like when you talk to each other is it do you guys ever like talk about tattoos or talk about artists you go to things like that for sure uh i was actually with kobe when he got his first tattoo um our season had just finished up at Carolina. And at that time, I had, you know, I had a solid amount of tats. I had, like, my chest was done, and I had two arm tats. And uh, I wanted to get something else, and I was like, you know, like, come with me. So I was with Kobe when he got his first tat. And then, um, you know, he popped out, had a whole sleeve, and I didn't even know. I was like, I was yeah. like, hey, bro, like, what happened? Um, um, and when Ant... So GT, um, obviously, he had, I think Gary Trent has some of the best ink in the league right now. For and sure. me, Anthony, and Gary were all teammates, uh, obviously. And, you know, we would always talk about Ant getting tatted because me and GT already had the tats. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Ant was like, nah, bro, like, you know, I'm not going to get them. He's like, I might get one little yeah. small one. And I was like, look, bro, if you get one tat, you're going to get your whole arm done. I'm telling That's you. It, yeah. And then, you know, he got, he got that little, he got the forearm. And then next thing you know, mm-hmm. I got the whole sleeve, you know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of, they're kind of addicting, man. You just want to, you just like the complete look of it. You know what I'm saying? Like if you start a sleeve, you know, you want to see it, you know, be completed. That's really um, the reason why guys get blasted like that. Yeah. No, and he went, like you said, he he was talking, I guess if he was talking to you guys about one tat, he really went like nuts. He he did full arm. He didn't wait nothing. He did yeah. that in like two months. A lot of our teammates did that. Uh, Robert Covington just got, Blasted, he got blasted. Yeah, yeah, I seen that. Sleeves got his whole stomach. Um, so how is that though? With with yeah. with like a veteran guy like Robert Covington versus like you? Do you guys ever like? Because he he came in um and he's been tatted for a while. He's been in the league yeah. for a while. So like his tattoos. Do you guys ever like look at his tattoos and you're kind of like looking at them like you know what is that or is it like? Like, this, just the style change in tattoos over the years. Right, right, because of that time. Uh, no, nah, Robert's tattoos are all pretty dope to me. Like, I think they mm-hmm. look good. Um, but the thing is, you know, as time goes on, you know, the the I think tattooing is just getting better and better. Like, the quality, yeah. the, the detail is just, uh, like, off the charts now. And clearly, back then, they probably didn't have that same kind of access. Even me, like, my right arm is better than my left arm, in my opinion, because... I got my left arm tatted, you know, in high school and college. So, like, the quality, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I didn't have money like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I was kind of just in a situation where I was affording whatever I could get at the time. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, like, I have the resources to kind of get exactly what I want, go to the artist I want, or go to a better artist who charges a bit more. Yeah. As opposed to, like, uh, getting a hookup or, you know, just trying to get something for the low just to, just to get the look. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you kind of see that you kind of, but Ant, you know, obviously wait until he got to the league. So all of his pieces are going to be quality, you know? So, yeah. um, I mean, it is what it is though. So I was just going to ask, so do you, when you go and look at your stuff, um, cause I feel the same way too. When I look at like a, a tattoo or mine, I'm sure a lot of people do too. You look at it sometimes and you're like, you know, I could have done something else or I could have, you know, you always, you always like think yeah. about it. But then at, at the end, it's like, you got to just like what you have because it's there and you can't really do nothing yeah. about it. Um, so is there a tattoo like, or do you wish uh, you waited till you got to the league or just waited till you kind of had the money to go out and get those artists? Or do you like the way uh, how it kind of like tells a story of your like come up kind of thing? 
I mean, that's a good point you bring up, man. Like, uh, you know, it's kind of, it just kind of shows you your progression. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can see, like, the progress of my tattoos from my first one to when I got my, to when I got my, to I went to my next artist and he was a bit mm-hmm. better than the first artist. And then I went to a third artist. He was a bit better. Like, it was kind of every, every step of my journey, you know, the artist that I was dealing with was a little bit better. So, it kind of does show my progression, you know, as a player, um, you know, and as I leveled up. Uh, and then I don't regret any of my tattoos. I think for the most part, all of my tattoos are pretty uh, solid. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like only tattoo is the one on my left forearm. I feel like it could be a little bit neater, but like you said, like it's just it's just part of who I am. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think I would change it. I would just probably, you know, go back over it and kind of make it a little more darker detail. But I really like all my tats. So are you are you looking to now that you got both arms done? Are you looking to like go to whether it's your torso, your back, your legs? Like, are you looking to just keep going? Yeah, um, I plan on doing the top of my back. Um, I'll probably do that next year. I usually try to do a, a one piece a year. Um, mm-hmm. I don't like to get tatted during the season because like the healing process can be a little bit like a little bit uncomfortable. I ain't going to say it's painful, but like, you know, when you get your arm tatted and you got to go work out, it's, it's not yeah, the best. It's thing, like, you know like what weird. I'm yeah, yeah. It just, it's your arm sore, you know? So I prefer to just be completely comfortable throughout the season. So in the off season, like I'll, towards the end of the off season, I'll get something. Um, but yeah, my next plan is uh, the top of my back. Um, the torso, man, like tattoos hurt. So like, I, I'm trying to yeah. think like if I can, I mean, obviously I could do it, but if I want to experience that type of pain, uh, I'm kind of going back and forth because I do want to kind of do something on the ribs, you know what I'm saying, there on the, you know, on somewhere on the torso. Um, my legs, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me I should get something on my legs, so that's something that I've been considering. But another factor is, like, knowing what you want, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want to yeah. just get, you know, random stuff. I, I kind of take my time, you know, look at things, get ideas from other people. And then, like, you know, once I found something I wanted to do, I'll lock into it and get it done. For sure. No, yeah, you want to make sure you know exactly what you're getting. You don't want to kind of just rush into it. And then, you know, in a couple of years, you look back and you're like, like, fuck, I didn't really want to do that. Um, Right, for sure. So you got you got your left arm um, is sort of like a religious sleeve, like when I was looking at your tats, right? And then the the, right arm, you have the Egyptian pieces with then the chest piece on the bottom. Yeah. So, yeah, so let's like talk about that. Arm, yeah, yeah, go ahead and my explain the, uh, is, explain it. Yeah, it's more of like a tribute to like me and my family, my close ones. Like, um, you know, it starts like things I'm just passionate about. You know what I'm saying? Like you got the basketball over here and praying hands. And, you know, my mom and grandma was always praying over me and, you know, my safety and career. Um, and I have a Bible verse right here. Um, and this is basically, it's just a reminder to me to just keep working hard. Uh, and then I have a tribute to my friend and I have a negative cross right here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, this is just like kind of like my sentimental arm, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. That's kind of how I look at it. And uh, here is more like, um, to me, like this is kind of signifies like who I am as like just the way that I think, like kind of my mental aspect, you know, I'm staying in my life where the Pharaoh, like in Egypt, you know, the pharaohs represent like divinity and, you know, kind of being powerful, you know what I'm saying? But virtually a king, but just an African uh, version of it, um, in essence. And then like the mental aspect, like, you know, life is like chess. It's a game. You got to be two moves ahead. Um, you know, I'm very strategic with how I move and I'm, I'm a deep thinker and stuff like that. So that's why I got the chess board and same with cards, like, you know, life is game, moving with purpose, uh, you know, playing the cards that you were dealt. And uh, yeah, that's really it. And I got a little so, chat on my wrist right here too, but that's just like a thing that signifies goes hand in hand with being a king. Mm-hmm. And your so your most recent one was the cards, right on the out, outer forearm. Yeah, yeah. And what was what's the longest you've sat for? What's the longest piece you've got? Definitely the pharaoh. Um, mm-hmm. I have so I have it's hard to see, but I have like uh, my area codes. You know, on the back of my arms, on both arms, I got 904 for Jacksonville, 407 for Orlando, you know, because I was raised equally between the two. So mm-hmm. I read both of them. But 
So I got the Pharaoh and the area code tatted in one session. So I sat for about seven or eight hours. Oof. Man, it was, I mean, it didn't feel that long, but it was, it was a definitely, uh, it was a, it was a rough experience. Man. Just, and you didn't, you I didn't do no it. numbing cream, nothing like that, right? Nah. Just straight nah, out. Just straight up. Yeah. Straight up. How much, how much do you think you've spent collective on, on your tattoos? Hmm. I'd probably say, uh, at least maybe three thousand, four thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like for me, like I have super long arms, which which matters. Like your arm length matters. You know what I'm saying? Like if you have a bigger arm, you know the canvas is bigger, therefore it takes more time. So like a guy who has a short wingspan, like won't pay the same amount of money, you know that I pay. You know what I'm saying? If we were to mm-hmm. virtually get yeah. the same tats. You know, his tats would be a smaller scale. So because my arms are so long, like my sessions tend to be longer. So it kind of raises the price. So about three thousand, four thousand dollars. So That's not 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 on uh, honestly not terrible, though, uh, for a guy that's fully, you know, fully covered. It's not that's not yeah. uh, like a break the bank kind of number. Um, but the thing is, in high school, like, obviously, I was getting like. A hundred dollar tats, hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And as I got yeah. to the league, like that's when my sessions were coming out to like, you know, a thousand dollars or you know what I'm saying, yeah. like stuff like that. But I think, like I was saying before, I think it's super dope because you could see, and you see this with a lot of players too. You see the progression almost in like their come up and in, in where it's like the the like quality of the art like steps up like crazy um, yeah. from like high school to the league, which is awesome to see because. That's like your life journey, you know. You went like you you did that. You you know at a time couldn't get the thousand dollar tattoo, so you went and still got the art you wanted for a cheaper price. For sure, bro. That's a great way to look at that. For so, so I'm start telling people that that's your your journey through it. <laughs> yeah. For you, um, I want to know like some of your your favorite guys in the league. Like, so you follow the page, obviously. Do you when you look at guys like when you're playing against someone, do you ever like sit there and you're kind of like looking over, or like if you're hanging out with someone and you're you you ever like notice their ink, or is it kind of like no, like, you like don't I look at like, how does that work? Uh, I like actively look for tattoos. Like, I really enjoy the look of tattoos. Like, even my teammate Dame, like Dame has some of the fire most fire tattoos I've ever seen. Like, I just love the way his sleeves, like, um, come together. And mm-hmm. I just, like, every time I see him, I just look at his tats and it's like, you know, I love the way he meshed his sleeves together. Like, you see, like, every bit of piece of him, you know what I'm saying? Like, from the Raiders on him, tatted on him, to, like, his the uh, city his college was in. He got, like, music on him. Like, it's just so dope, like, how it, yeah. how he expresses himself through his tattoos. And, and you he, know, that kind of sparked me, too. He just got to his um, the the heart on the like the blackout heart yeah, right under his yeah. like neck piece, and that fits like you were saying with the jersey like that fit when he's wearing a jersey hard, that fits yeah. so good yeah that, so it looks so dope. And then he has, like, I feel the, like that's uh, go ahead. What you call the things, bro? Where like in the hospital, oh, the, the uh, like heart monitor. Yeah, he has like yeah the, he has the, it on his back, so it's like yeah. dope how you can like see it like you know a drug store. He's one of those dudes in the league, when you look at his tats, like whenever I post anything Dame, I feel like it fits. It sort of like looks like a 2K player. Like you had the jersey on when you were getting the tats kind of look, yeah, which is like yeah. super dope because you look elite on the court when it's like that. Thanks, bro. Definitely. He's definitely so, my, uh, like, yeah, for sure. Does does Dame ever uh, like talk to you or like say anything? Because Dame uh, is another dude. Dame came into the league super tatted up. So Dame's been yeah. tatted for a while and then he went through the same progression as where now he's going to Steve Wybe, you know, one of the mo- best, most exclusive artists in the world. Um, so does he ever like try and hook you guys up with like a session with Steve or like talk about just tattoos, anything like that with you guys? Uh, no, nah, not really. Um, the thing about those types of artists is that like, you know, if you want to get things like they're so good that like they're constantly booked. So like yeah. if you're not like in close, like if you're not close to them or. You know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of hard to book with those guys. Like you, or you got to be like on top of it and just wait till the openings are. But most athletes, our schedules are unpredictable, so we can't really like, you know, go through the formal booking and session type thing. Mm-hmm. And 
if you're looking to get a sleeve done by one artist, you know, like they're so busy that you'd have to probably get the whole sleeve done in one session, you know, yeah. in regards to like a course of a week or so or four days and then uh, wait probably a year till they're available again. And then, you know, it's just kind of a hard process when they're super good because they're, you know, they're good for a reason. They get booked. So, um, um nah, we well, never you gotta, uh, did that. You got to go in knowing exactly what you want to, because like you were saying, you're going down with a full arm sleeve. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You have so much space to fill. Uh, that's, hard, yeah. that's hard to do for sure so uh who are some guys because i know you growing up like basketball when you were coming through like the the system um is like in the spotlight because you're like a super young guy so everything was on you know youtube on instagram whether whatever it was so you constantly always had like that spotlight on you growing up um who are some guys that you played with or that you are like friends with that like you want to, cause I know uh, uh, that you want to see get tattooed or you kind of like, I don't know, like growing up where you were like yeah. playing with, like, I know you, you were on the same team as Cam, Cam Johnson, Cameron Johnson. Um, yeah. and he's one of those like clean cut guys, like not, no ink kind of just like the 2k generic player. Um, yeah. so do you ever like mess around with him or I saw you were with, uh, Bridges the other day. Um, and he's another guy, like, you know what I'm saying? 2K right. generic character just going into the game. Um, do you ever talk to those guys or, like, uh, say anything to those guys about Ink? Yeah, I, tell, I pretty much tell all my friends, like, yo, like, get tatted. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of like the guy that tries to influence uh, everybody to get tatted because I just think it's dope. Um, even Ant, before he got tatted, I'm like, bro, you should definitely get tatted. You know what I'm saying? Always, always in his ear um, about it. Um, Kevin Porter Jr., like, he was – he inspired me to get tatted. Um, because he was in high school with two full sleeves. Like, yeah, and yeah. I was like, I had never seen anything like that. I had never seen somebody that age. And not just in high school. We was like 16, maybe 15. He had two full sleeves. I had never seen yeah. that, but I thought it was so hard. Like, I thought it was dope. I remember I seen the, there's like a, a Hoops mixtape or something of him in high school. And he looked like a grown ass man in high school. He yeah, had both full, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full sleeves at is, sixteen. KP is young. He's younger than yeah. Like, no, I know. The, yeah, he's and, younger and, than the majority of our class for real. Which is nuts because literally you watch that video and it looks like it's like some some grown ass dude playing like AAU ball. Just because in the tap, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, so, um, who are some of your uh, favorite tattoos in the league? If you could get, throw out a, a top five for me, like pieces or like just like overall like um, well if you have pieces that's fire if you if you know specific pieces but if not just like five dudes is fine uh i think gary trent for sure has yeah some of the best ink like his leg sleeve is like fire um uh dame uh who else uh lonzo ball that was really oh, like sure. uh, his work is super quality. PJ Washington, yeah, Miles Bridges. Um, yeah. I'd probably say like those are those are the first five guys that come to my mind, just mm -hmm. off of like the way it looks, the quality. But some other guys, Jordan Clarkson, fire. John Wall has fire. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, like yeah, that's a guy. Oh no, yeah, J but, J yeah. JC has been going crazy too. Um, yeah. Him with the with the like face tats. I want to ask your opinion on stuff like that. So when or or how do you see the league progressing in terms of uh like tattoos in like those taboo spots, whether it's like the face, the, the neck, the hand, you know, that used to be like kind of looked down on. How do you see yeah. like the league progressing in terms of like those things? I definitely see it uh, trending towards that being more common for sure. Like, you know, like you said, the hand, like it was always like, you know, the business tats where you keep it, you know, below exactly. the sleeves, yeah. below the wrist, nothing above the neck basically to where everything could be covered if you wear, you know, long sleeve stuff. But now, like, you know, I'm starting to see more hand tats. Um, you're starting to see more guys get tatted on their necks. Yeah. Um, a few guys got face tats, like Willie Collie Stein. Um, mm -hmm. uh, KP has a small one, Jordan Clarkson now. Um, so, like, I, I definitely see it trending towards that way. Like, you know what I'm saying? Slowly as more guys start to get it, um, I definitely see it going that way for sure. 
And so the KPJ one that you just mentioned, that's like, to me, that's wild that you even know that exists because that's like, he's got the smallest, smallest, like little smiley face on the face. Yeah. Is that, a, is that something you've seen like on, like online, like Instagram or something, or is that like in person you realize you notice that tattoo? I want to say y'all posted it. I want to say yeah. I've seen it. And then I zoomed in on his face and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I was like, that's, a, that's really a tat. It's crazy. No, yeah, because it's like that. That is like tiny, tiny. It looks, it looks like, like a freckle. Like it just looks like a freckle. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, would you ever see yourself uh, going and getting whether it's face tat, neck tat, anything like that? No, nah, I think the most that I would do is maybe the one that's like behind the ear. Mm-hmm. But I don't really see. Like, I definitely don't see myself like getting my neck blasted. I just can't. Like, I genuinely don't feel like I could sit through that. You know what I'm saying? I just don't see myself doing that. And uh, I wouldn't tap my face. You know, I think it's dope, but for me, like, you know, it's not my thing. Do you have any, um, like, what your influences you were talking about, your first tattoo was, uh, like, your mom kind of said to go ahead and go do it with your siblings. Um, do you... Like, do you think that you'll ever get uh, any any other matching tattoos, whether it's with like a longtime teammate, let's say your your end of your career, you played with someone your whole career, or like your siblings again? Like, would you ever uh, go and get another matching tattoo? Yeah, uh, you know, one of my best friends, his name is Ronaldo Segu. Um, he plays at yeah, yeah. University of Buffalo. Um, we, you know, that's like my brother. So we're gonna probably get a matching tat. Um, he already got it on him, and I'm probably gonna get it a little bit later. Uh, but mm-hmm. we got this uh, group called Mud Made, you know what I'm saying? Basically, just how we got it. We got out the mud. So he got that tatted on him. So I'm going to go get that. But it's a smaller thing. I, I usually like to knock out the big pieces, but uh, but I'm going to get that tatted somewhere for sure. That's fire. No, yeah, Segu is, is super tatted, too. And he's another guy. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's up and super coming young, too, right? Too. Yeah. So. Um. All right, last last couple questions before we wrap up. Um, but so I want to know if there's an artist out there that's on like the top of your list. Like, is there a guy uh, that you like seen his work um, and you're like, you know, I really want to go and get tatted by that person? Uh, for me, it's Jeezy. Um, I think, okay, you know, to me, like I just like I love looking at his work. Like I'll just go to his page and just scroll and just look at the tats like. You know, the quality and the realism is just like off the charts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just it's crazy. Um, you know, that's my that's my personal favorite artist, but you know, obviously, you know the other guys that are out there that are, you know, pretty well established, well known and not to take away from anybody, but Jeezy is just my personal favorite. Um, you know, I think he did PJ Washington, who has like one of the like yeah. neatest looking sleeves in the league, you know what I'm saying? It's just like super neat, super it's just like the way it flows is just dope. Well put together, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he did the the you mentioned bridges in your top five. He's also uh, he did bridges, bridges whole um, sleeve too. And then uh, Salmonish from the uh, Spurs, like he just got yeah. um, his. Right, they're just all fire. So uh, he's definitely like my favorite artist. Do you see like when you're looking at the page because you obviously you follow the page and you're talking about it a lot, which I think is so dope that you like actually like when you see something, you're kind of like looking at it and and clicking around, whether it's going to the artist page or just like, like you said, you're zooming in on a photo. Do you get any influence from those guys, from like pictures like that? Um, Like, are you seeing, you see like a tattoo on the page, like you screenshot it, you know, send it to, send it to your artist, something like that. Do you ever do that? Um, I definitely get influenced by things, uh, by the, you know, the art I see that, and that I think is dope. Like I'll definitely, you know, be like, wow, that's fire. But it's a delicate line between like, feeling like you're trying to copy somebody or, you know, trying mm-hmm. to steal. Like, I don't ever want to feel like I'm stealing something from somebody that makes them unique. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, you know, obviously, you know, everybody has like, there's the cliche tattoos, like the praying hands cross, like, you know, like those are cliche, yeah, yeah. but you know, we, we, we all get them. Cause it's like, you know, it's like, if it means something to you, it means something to you, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it's partially that, but um, you know, there's tats where like, they're unique, but I wish I would have thought of it first. Like, yeah, Roko got the hieroglyphics like on his stomach. It's bro, it's so dope. Like, that's the one of the dopest schemes I've ever seen in my life. And it's just like I don't even know if I've damn. seen that. I gotta, I gotta, I like, gotta he see just if I got can... it. Y'all haven't, okay. yeah, y'all, okay. y'all haven't seen it yet. But he just got like, because he has an Egyptian theme, like, uh, you know, tat scheme going on, and then he just got like these hieroglyphics 
like running throughout his stomach. It's like that's bro, fire. When y'all get the picture, bro, it's gonna be crazy. But uh, that's one of those things where that's him. You know what I'm saying? Like I yeah, can't do that. Yeah. Like, that's that's his way for sure. So then let's before we before we sign off. So I want to touch on that then. Uh, Mikey Williams, you just seen, uh, he got the, the D'Angelo Russell now tattoo, um, yeah. on his, on his shoulder. Uh, and when I was talking about it to, obviously you're going to get like the comments and shit that's like all over the place. People always hating on someone like that. But when I was looking at it, I was trying to look at like the outside of it. Cause in my head too, I feel the same way where it's like, you know, getting the same exact tattoo kind of a little corny where it's like, you know, not your thing. But then again, that kid is, you know, Mikey's, what is he, 16, I think. Um, So it's like he came up, whereas like this generation, your generation or the older generation was was either AI or was the Birdman, whatever. His influence is now the younger guys. So he's getting influenced by D'Lo, Clarkson, whether it's, you you know, yourself, Cauley Stein, guys like that. So he's looking at their ink. He's looking at what they're doing and kind of going and doing his his own thing um yeah. so i funny, feel i feel that. like go ahead yeah because I, I had seen that and i was like dang that's hard like i think that's dope like the time is now like that's a dope mm-hmm. concept um but like i had the same thought i was like as dope as that is like that's his way you know what i'm saying like yeah it's just kind of like you know you got to be a little bit creative think of your own you know just and it's hard because not all of us are artists so it's hard to like draw up your own thing but it's just kind of that's why you got to be patient you know what i'm saying like when yeah. you try to get blasted and just try to get i don't want to say rush but when you know when you're just eager you know what i'm saying you tend to like do stuff like yo you see it and you just get it because it looks good you know what i'm saying kind of just be patient chill and you might see something that you ain't really seen on nobody you're like oh like i'm gonna get that yeah you know what i'm saying and it'll just certain things will just pop up that you'll like and are you into art at all like, have you, when you grew up, did you, like, play around with, like, art, drawing, painting, anything like that? I mean, yeah, I did. I was never good at it, um, you know what I'm saying? But I've always, like, enjoyed, um, you know, looking at art. Like, I've always had an appreciation for art, you know, for lack of better terms. Like, if my friends could draw, like, I'd always be enamored with what they was doing and what they had in the, you know, little um, scrapbooks and stuff like that. So, like, I've always been into it, you know what I'm saying? And. I was the type of person like where if somebody could draw like, bro, you should be a tattoo artist. Yeah. Like I do stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So, you, so let me ask you something like what made y'all like, uh, dedicate like an entire lane to tattoos. Like if that makes sense, like, you know, tattoos are, you know, they're dope, but like, you know, what made you be interested in it enough to like dedicate a whole page and like, you know, the amount of interest that you guys get from people, like, do you guys have an idea that that would be a success or, no, I mean, when I started it, it was uh, it was when D'Angelo Russell was on the Nets because I'm from Brooklyn. So okay. I started it up. Uh, I was looking to, for my first tattoo and I was like, um, I always thought D'Lo looked like swaggy as hell on the court. So I was like, you know, right. I, like always into basketball. So I was like, I kind of want to see some of these guys tattoos. And I like looked it up and I found nothing like there was shit out for it. There was nothing out. Right. So I was like, all right, like I, I played around with it um, in the beginning when I first started. I was posting like just kind of like reposting stuff where you like saw it like kind of cool on the court. Uh, yeah. And I saw and you know that like there's the pages for for uh, outfits like there's a bunch of the outfit pages. Yeah, there's that's, there's that's all the shoe yeah. pages, stuff like that. So I was like, all right, there's definitely going to be an audience. But I did not think at all that it would get to where it's at now, where it's like one, the la- the launch of the podcast, which is like this is super dope. And then two, having guys like yourself or having like just NBA guys in general, like pay attention and kind of like see it or comment on it is like crazy to me. Cause you know, yeah. in the end I'm a, I'm a fan at heart. So it's like when I see content I'm putting out being reacted to or being um, seen by guys that are like in the league that I'm fans of, I think is like the coolest thing. That's dope, man. For sure. Okay. That's just up. Yeah. Sure. So it was more so it was just like there wasn't there wasn't a, a space there for it. Like there wasn't someone doing it. And I was kind of just like, fuck it, like I'm yeah. going to start it up. And then the, and then it like the traction it got was nuts. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what's up, bro. For sure. I appreciate you asking, asking me. That's dope that you like kind of cared about that. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate you jumping on. Talk to me for a little bit about your ink. I uh, wish you luck this season. And uh, I hope all is well. Yeah.